The unicorn backed into a corner and lowered her head, but the harpy stirred softly in her cage, ringing, and the gray shape turned what must have been its head and saw her. It made a foggy, globbering sound of terror and was gone. The magician cursed and shivered. He said, I called him up one other time, long ago. I couldn't handle him then, either. Now we owe our lives to the harpy, and she may yet come to call for them before the sun rises. He stood silent, twisting his wounded fingers, waiting for the unicorn to speak. I'll try once more, he said finally. Shall I try once more? The unicorn thought that she could still see the night boiling where the gray thing had been. Yes, she said. Schmendrick took a deep breath, spat three times, and spoke words that sounded like bells ringing under the sea. He scattered a handful of powder over the spittle, and smiled triumphantly as it puffed up in a single silent flash of green. When the light had faded, he said three more words. They were like the noise bees might make, buzzing on the moon. The cage began to grow smaller. The unicorn could not see the bars moving, but each time Schmendrick said, "'Ah, no!' She had less room in which to stand. All the, already she could not turn around. The bars were drawing in, pitiless as the tide or the morning, and they would shear through her until they surrounded her heart, which they would keep a prisoner forever. She had not cried out when the creature Schmendrick had summoned came, grinning towards her, but now she made a sound. It was small and despairing, but not yet yielding. Schmendrick stopped the bars, though she never knew how. If he spoke any magic, she had not heard it, but the cage stopped shrinking a breath before the bars touched her body. She could feel them all the same, each one like a little cold wind, meowing with hunger, but they could not reach her. The magician's arms fell to his sides. I dare no more, he said heavily. The next time I might, might not be able. His voice trailed miserably away, and his eyes were as defeated as his hands. The witch made no mistake in me, he said. Try again, the unicorn said. You are my friend. Try again. But Schmendrick, smiling bitterly, was fumbling through his pockets in search of something that clicked and clinked. I knew it would come to this, he muttered. I dreamed it differently, but I knew. He brought out a ring from which dangled several rusty keys. You deserve the services of a great wizard, he said to the unicorn, but I'm afraid... You'll have to be glad for the aid of a second-rate pickpocket. Unicorns know not of need or shame or doubt or debt, but mortals, as you may have noticed, take what they can get, and Rook can only concentrate on one thing at a time. The unicorn was suddenly aware that every animal in the midnight carnival was awake, making no sound but watching her. In the next cage, the harpy began to stamp slowly from one foot to the other. Hurry, the unicorn said, hurry! Schmendrick was already fitting a key into the snickering lock. At his first attempt, which failed, the lock fell silent, but when he tried another key, it cried out loudly, Ho-ho! Oh, some magician! Some magician! It had Mommy Fortuna's voice. Ah, turn blue, the magician mumbled, but the unicorn could feel him blushing. He twisted the key, and the lock snapped open with one last grunt of contempt. Schmendrick swung the cage door wide and softly. Step down, lady. You are free. The unicorn stepped lightly to the ground, and Schmendrick the magician drew back in wonder. Oh, he whispered. It was different when there were bars between us. You looked smaller and not as... Oh, oh my. She was home in her forest, which was black and wet and ruined because she had been gone so long. Someone was calling to her from a long way off, but she was home, warming the trees and waking the grass. Then she heard Rook's voice, like a boat bottom gritting on pebbles. Okay, Schmendrick, I give up. Why is a raven like a writing desk? The unicorn moved away into deepest shadow, and Rook saw only the magician and the empty, dwindled cage. His hand jumped to his pocket and came away again. Why, you thin thief, he said, grinning iron. She'll string you on barbed wire to make a necklace for the harpy. He turned then and headed straight for Mommy Fortuna's wagon. Run, the magician said. He made a frantic, foolish, flying leap and landed on Rook's back, hugging the dark man dumb and blind with his long arms. 
they fell together and schmendrick scrambled up first his knees nailing rook's shoulders to the earth barbed wire he gasped you pile of stones you waste you desolation i'll stuff you with misery till it comes out of your eyes i'll change your heart into green grass and all you love into a sheep i'll turn you into a bad poet with dreams i'll set all your toenails growing inward you mess with me rook shook his head and sat up hurling schmendrick ten feet away what are you talking about he chuckled you can't turn cream into butter the magician was getting to his feet but rook pushed him back down and sat on him i never did like you he said pleasantly you gave yourself airs and you're not very strong heavy as night his hands closed on the magician's throat the unicorn did not see she was out at the farthest cage where the manticore growled and whimpered and lay flat she touched the point of her horn to the lock and was gone to the dragon's cage without, without looking back one after another she set them all free the satyr cerberus the midgard serpent their enchantments vanished as they felt their freedom and they leaped and lumbered and slithered away into the night once more a lion an ape a snake a crocodile a joyous dog none of them thanked the unicorn and she did not watch them go only the spider paid no mind when the unicorn called softly to her through the open door arachne was busy with a web which looked to her as though the milky way had begun to fall like snow the unicorn whispered weaver freedom is better freedom is better but the spider fled unhearing up and down her iron loom she never stopped for a moment even when the unicorn cried it's really very attractive arachne but it's not art the new web drifted down the bars like snow then the wind began the spider web blew across the unicorn's eyes and disappeared the harpy had begun to beat her wings calling her power in as a crouching wave draws sand and water roaring down the beach a bloodshot moon burst out of the clouds and the unicorn saw her swollen gold her streaming hair kindling the cold slow wings shaking the cage the harpy was laughing in the shadow of the unicorn's cage rook and schmendrick were on their knees the magician was clutching the heavy ring of keys and rook was rubbing his head and blinking their faces were blind with terror as they stared at the rising harpy and they leaned together in the wind it blew them against one another and their bones rang the unicorn began to walk towards the harpy's cage schmendrick the magician tiny and pale kept opening and closing his mouth at her and she knew what he was shrieking though she could not hear him she will kill you she will kill you run you fool while she's still a prisoner she will kill you if you set her free but the unicorn walked on following the light of her horn until she stood before seleno the dark one for an instant the icy wings hung silent in the air like clouds and the harpy's old yellow eyes sank into the unicorn's heart and drew her close i will kill you if you set me free the eyes said set me free 